Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Custom. So today we're going to start a work in progress series of changing this Joker's Premium Format head from that head to this head. So somebody sent me the statue and they don't really want this head on the statue anymore. They want this one. Now the problem with this one is the neck and key does not fit, of course. Now, if I was to Dremel out this head and use Aves and try to get this in and out with Aves, I'm going to destroy all this cloth and we don't want to do that. So the easiest way of doing this is two ways actually. One, if this head was destroyed and they didn't want this head, I would be able to just to saw off this area here of this head with this key and then saw off this area and add it to this head. But he wants to keep this head. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of the bottom of this head's key. Just the key. We're not recasting the head. We're just making a copy of the key. Now I know a lot of guys in the hobby that have uh, people sculpt custom heads or for their statues. What a lot of the guys do is they make throwaway molds of the key and then what they do is they uh, put the key onto the statue and then they make their armature and then they sculpt a new head. Uh, for what I'm going to be doing is just making a quick copy of this bottom key so this way I don't destroy all this cloth and everything. Now, I know a lot of guys also, uh, they go to Home Depot and stuff and they get silicone and they put silicone around there, they let it cure, and then they make a throwaway mold. I have some products here from uh, past uh, customs that I've done and we're gonna kinda go over them, which is like trial kits. But for this project, all you need is a hot glue gun, uh, you need some foam core uh, to make a box, get it in the uh, you know, art store, a ruler, exacto blade, and something to cut your foam core on because you don't want to slice up your floor and or your desk. Uh, so here are the two products that I have. We have uh, my liquid rubber, which is going to become the mold, and then we have liquid plastic, which is resin, which is going to become the key. So this is OOM0030. Now this is me mix A and B together, and I'll kind of go over that down the line, but that's going to be our mold. Uh, this cures in about... 30, no, this cures in about 6 hours, whereas the 25 cures in about 30 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. I've used this stuff in the past, which is great. If you sculpt something and you need to make a copy of it, you know, for a, a custom, or say you're working on a statue, right? Like, say you're working on Joker statue, and you sculpted some really cool, you sculpted a really cool button, but you want to put really cool buttons down the thing you can use this stuff and you can sculpt one button make a mold and then you can make a couple copies of those buttons instead of re you know re-sculpting everything over and over and over that's pretty much what this stuff is for uh and then uh over there is the resin so once we have our mold done we put a and b together resin we pour it in there it hardens and then we have a key that we have to attach to the new head so my first step is i'm going to create a box so I'm going to measure out all my box, I'm going to cut it, and then we'll do a fast video of hot gluing it. And then after that, we're going to come back and I'm going to do more detailed stuff in this video without doing the fast stuff. So you guys can actually see in real time on how all this works. Uh, we won't really focus on the paint work because it's just focused on putting this head onto that statue and then I paint it up and then we're done. So, with that being said, I'm going to start measuring out my box. I'll get it all cut up. We'll come back. I'll show you how I glue it. And then uh, go from there, we'll start uh, making the mold and the resin. Okay, so what I did is at the corner of my uh, foam core, I cut out this uh, square piece and I measured. Uh, I didn't do it on camera because I had to keep measuring and making sure everything was good. And it's pretty simple. So what I did is I scored here, scored here, scored there. I popped it out and then I bend all the pieces. So we have a nice good little... Uh, Nice little uh, folded up box. So I'm going to hot glue this together and I'll probably use some tape. And then what I did is I cut out little notches here. So this way, when this piece is all together, I can actually put the head on like that. So, and then what I'll probably do is I'll probably get some masking tape or something and I'll tape around the head just so it's not flopping when I'm pulling it in or moving it around. Uh, yeah, and it's uh, looking pretty good. And uh, let me just get this hot glue, we'll come back and I'll explain a little bit more. So I just kind of want to explain what's going on before we start pouring our mold. So, I had the box all set up, it's all heat, uh, you know, glue gun, it's all set up. I went overboard with the glue because I've learned in the past if you don't really set up the edges very well, uh, the mold can actually start pouring out of there and it's, you know, a hot glue gun, the glue is cheap you get anywhere cheap so it's better just to use it up 
So, you're probably wondering why all this pink mold is sitting around here. This pink stuff is Mold Max 30. This is the stuff you use for whenever, like, you know, if you're uh, casting up an original sculpt of, you know, say a woman in a jungle and you, you know, you want to make up like, you know, 20, 30 kits and bring it to a show and sell it or whatever. This is this type of stuff that you use. Uh, it's very durable and it's heat resistant because when you mix A and B resin together, it's a chemical reaction. It gets very, very hot. So this stuff withstands the heat compared to the Oom stuff that I'll be using doesn't withstand the heat that much and you can't really make a lot of copies. So this stuff is reusable though because when the mold goes bad after like 30 copies or 40 copies uh, you can still use the mold itself by chopping it up because silicone bonds the silicone. So by saying that I have all these chunks here and then what I did was I cut up a couple chunks and I put it in a box. So for two reasons. One, it saves some money and two, it actually helps secure the head a little bit. So by putting the head in there like that, it's not actually flopping around like it was before. So what I could do is right over in this corner, we can pour in the Oom stuff, the Oom 30, and I don't have to mix up that much, and it'll blend all the way around there, and it'll bond to that silicone that's in there now. And like I said, I'm just trying to get the key. I'm not worried about the anything up top. We just want to get this key set up. So... I just wanted to get that out of the way and show you guys why there's pink stuff in there and how you can actually save money. Of course, if you're doing it for the first time and you don't have any of this pink mold sitting around, you use just the regular oom to fill up the whole box, but this is a good way to do this. So uh, we're going to get set up and we'll start pouring the mold. All right, ready to mix this stuff up. I got my gloves. I poured in equal amounts on both sides of this cup. We're going to mix it into here. Now, uh, this is part B. Part B is very oily. As you can kind of see, it kind of goes pretty well well the part a is a little bit thicker i think this is actually thicker because this stuff might be old and i've had this open for a while uh like i said i only use this stuff for these small little projects i mixed up a lot i'm going to mix up a lot though and pour it in because i'm not really sure though if uh this is too thick when i mix it together if it doesn't pour in like very like very liquidy like taffy i'm gonna have to pop out the head and then I'm going to have to push the head into the mold and then let it cure that way. But I think it should be fine. I think once this mixes in with this, it should be pretty well. But off camera, what I had to do is I had to mix all this stuff in here. And I had to mix all this in here and then pour it in. You can't just let this stuff sit and not mix it pretty well. So, let's mix this stuff up in here. For you. Now, uh, I have one of these cups too. I was told by a, a caster who's been doing this stuff for years. You get these like uh, stuff here with these points and it pours in pretty well. So... This is going to pour in easy. As you can kind of see, it goes in fairly easy. This is going to kind of go in slow, so I got to kind of pour this in. All right. So, got to kind of push this in. Yeah, see, this might be pretty old. That's why it's kind of thickened up. It's not a, not a good sign, but it'll still work. We'll still get the key made this way. Alright, let me start mixing this together. Yeah, we should be pretty good now. Yeah, it's going to turn like purplish, but you got to mix it really well. Make sure you get all around. we'll get an idea see it kind of pours in pretty well so we're all right we're good kept on thinking it was a blue but it's more of a purple yeah because we're mixing pink and but stuff works out really good well. Like I said, this stuff has like a six hour cure time. If you're working with the, the faster setting stuff, like right now I'd have to start pouring it in right away. But for different projects, different set times, different things work. Yeah, this is actually pretty thick, so it's actually getting pretty bad. So, that's fine. We're going to pop out the head, we'll pour in the mold, and we'll just push the head in and let it cure. 
nothing I can do about it. Because usually mold kind of should be pouring out really, really uh, smooth. But this is really, really thick. It's just letting me know that it's been open, it's old, and it's not going to pour correctly. But it's still going to do fine for what we need. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out the head. Let's tear it like this. Pop out the head. Get on gloves again. Uh, I like to use gloves because I got some other projects I'm working on and I really can't have myself touching all those. Okay, so let's make sure it's all mixed up really well. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. So let's start just pouring this stuff in. It'll set really nice. It's still, even though it's a little thick, it's still going to set. Okay. Yep, this mold is bad, but it's still going to do what we need it to do. Let's, uh, Alright, so, except, like I said, you don't have to worry about this going into the head at all. It's not a big deal. It's not going to bond to it. Now we can just kind of do this. Alright, so I'm going to uh, just let that slowly fall down. And then uh, let this cure up for a couple hours and we're good to go. Okay, it's the next day and it's all cured up. So uh, usually what I do is, on any type of this stuff, I kind of cut down the stuff. You got to make sure you don't cut the actual item. But, and So as you can see, that uh, didn't really go down to the bottom too much. Like I said, this is uh, was bad mold, but it's probably going to work out perfect anyway. So that's a good thing. And we pop it out. All right, so there we go. We, we got the key. So you can pretty much see that I'll be able to fill... What I'll probably do is I'll probably keep it at an angle. And then what I'll do is I'll let the resin go to like right about the back of the hair a little bit. Eh, yeah. And maybe just tight, slightly an angle, because I don't want all the resin to come up around here. Um, but yeah, it's going to give key. There's a little bit of a mess up air bubble right over in this part. Uh, it's not on the key. So therefore, I'll probably have to do just a little bit of a sanding on this little tiny piece. Probably, let's see if you can see it. It's like right there. But yeah, so now i got a nice good little key. So um, I'm going to go get some resin set up. We'll pour in some resin, we'll let that get set up, and then we can start uh, chopping up the other head and making this key work. Okay, so I'm getting all set up to pour the resin. So this is a B, this is A. I have to mix equal amounts into the cups, and this right here is just a black dye. You put a tiny bit of black dye in there, so when you mix it up, the resin doesn't come out white. It comes out like, you know, a grayish. It, a lot of guys do that because it's easier to see the resin than pure white, because pure white, you really can't really see a lot of the any mistakes or any problems just adding a little bit of a dye I know some companies use green some use black it just helps see it a little better and you'll you'll get an idea so I'm gonna mark up these cups I'm gonna put in equal amounts and then I'm gonna pour it into this cup mix it up and pour it in and then uh, when I pour that in I'll stop the camera and I'll start it again and you can watch it cure in fast time it takes like you know 15 minutes or so and uh, we'll have a key all set up. But uh, I just got to shake this stuff up better. I got to get this stuff poured in off camera with gloves. And I just want to get set up so we can just start pouring everything. Okay, we're ready to start mixing up the stuff. What I did is, this stuff is clear, but what I did is I put a little bit of the black dye in there and I mixed that up together in the B. So that's all ready to go. So equal amounts, pour these in. So this stuff you got to kind of work a little fast. 
don't have to worry about too much. It doesn't matter if I have extra resin because this resin has been open for a while. So I want to make sure I get the key. I'm not worried about any extra resin. Mix this stuff together. Usually I count to like 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000 to 15. Make sure you're wearing guy goggles too if you're using this type of stuff. Uh, I do have the mold at just a little bit of an angle. And if, if you start to hold it and you hold it too long, you'll start feeling the cup getting hot. That means the chemical reaction's working and it's going to start curing. Yeah, so we're looking pretty good there. So I just want to pour it in nice and... Making a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. Alright, so. Going to stop the camera. I'm going to pour this out in somewhere else. And we'll come back and you can see this stuff cure pretty fast. Alright, so it's been about a good 20 minutes. I let this stuff uh, sit in here for a bit. I know you're not supposed to really let it sit too long, but I had to run out real quick. But uh, I don't know if you saw in the fast part of the video what I did is I hit it with a blow dryer because you need heat to set the stuff even faster. So whenever I work on something really small like this, you know, like it's pouring in, I usually use a blow dryer to hit it up. Um, it is actually warm out today, so it's actually good. In the winter time, even though you have heat on in the house, sometimes you really got to let it... Uh, cure up a little bit more but the stuff works out pretty good so we'll pop it out now and we got a basic key yeah so uh like i said there's a little bit of a smooch stuff over here uh but the key looks pretty good there's a little bit of bubbling uh because it wasn't like a pressure pop but that's going to get all filled in anyway and i'm going to have to kind of tweak it a little bit more so uh what i'm going to go do is i'm going to go into the garage and kind of drum out this little part a little bit and we'll come back and we'll just put the key in the head uh, base for now. And we'll just get an idea of how it looks. Alright, so here we go. We're going to put the head in here and it should uh, work out pretty good. Uh, let's make sure. And there we go. So now we have a head. Well, basically a headless joker, but there is a neck. So it works in, goes in pretty well. Uh, just got to dremel some stuff out. I got to get the other head now. And I'm going to have to... You know, drum out a lot of that neck and get that pretty much under there. What I'll probably do is I'm going to probably drum out this around here to give it like an arrow point. And then with this head, what I'll do is I'll do the same thing. So this kind of goes on. Um, that's pretty much how it's going to work. It should go pretty good. And then, uh, let's see. Um, what I'll probably do too is I'll probably drum out there and I'll put in a magnet first. I'm probably going to get the magnet worked out first. Uh, maybe I'll do that today while I'm drumming out the head and then uh, just go from there. Alright, so uh, what I did is I drummed out a little circle and I put in the magnet. And I made sure this magnet actually goes correctly into the neck. Now, I can't really put this in now because if I pop this out, it's going to pull the magnet out. I, ma I put magic sculpt in there, so it's going to take a little while. But you can kind of see what I did with this little neck. I kind of drummed out a little circle. I'll probably drum out a little bit more. But what I did with this head is I drummed out a little bit of the piece on there. I messed up on a few spots, but that's okay. I'm going to have to, I'm going to be cleaning this up anyway when I redo it. But, so this key piece is going to go into this now like that. It's going to, it's not going to be completely flush. I got to kind of tweak it, but we're going to create a little bit of a key type like that. And then I got to clean it up. Now, the back of the head is going to be the major issue because I, you know, I got part of that hair back there, but... I need to keep this uh, piece back here for when I put on the cloth on the head. So I'm going to let this key cure up for a while. Uh, probably kind of tweak this stuff out a little bit more. I'm not really filming me doing Dremel work because it's just tedious and I got to keep Dremeling. But I'm going to just kind of work this out a little bit more, the holes and stuff. And then uh, maybe uh, later today or tomorrow we'll get this attached and we'll make sure that this is all lined up and you know we have it on his head. So it's kind of looking pretty cool. So uh, that's where we're at now, and this is kind of a, uh, you know, like working with Magisculpt and stuff, you got to let stuff cure for a while and come back to it. I could have glued this in, 
but I really wanted to use Magic Sculpt and Sex. I really wanted it to be secured and uh, really set in there pretty well. Cause sometimes uh, glue can come out, it can crack. I don't know. I just with this one, we're just going that route. So let that cure. We'll come back and we'll keep plugging away. All right. So we're gonna attach this now. And got my little piece of rod. You can use it now. You can use any kind of uh, pegging. You know, brass, uh, whatever you want to use. Uh, I always use the little brass rods. I got some Magic Sculpt mixed up. And it's just a matter of taking this and just shoving a bunch of magic sculpt in here. Taking some more, throwing it over in the side. And you just need something to push it all in. End of a tool, whatever you got. Usually at this point, I kind of just see if I'm hitting anything with the magic sculpt or not really. You definitely want to make sure you're getting something so yeah so about that much is what I need so we'll put this here like this we'll throw some more over here throw a little bit of the rest over there I'll take the rod push it in there and then uh, what I like to do is just to keep it set I have my glue which is a gel and I have my insta set my uh, little spray bottle they always these little pieces keep breaking out of these I don't know why so I have to use it like a dropper I gotta get something like cheap but what I like to do is at this point underneath the chin throw a bunch of glue there you can kinda see a little bit of a dab of glue close that up and then take this and Go like that. So you're pushing in pretty well. The glue's coming out a little bit, so we'll wipe away the glue. Kind of in the right position. Not worried that the magic sculpt is being pushed around. I'm more worried about the glue. But so we want to kind of set it. So we kind of hit the dropper around the glue area so that insta sets and holds it and then with all this little extra magic sculpt that's kind of squeezing around if you got a tool just kind of pull it out doesn't really matter that's looking messy like I said we're gonna go back to it and we're gonna get the A's and do some sculpting plus what uh I let this cure for the night and I'm going to have to pull out, dremel out some of this here and bring up the neck a little bit. Because this is kind of like the back of the hair from the previous head, as you can see. But, you know, and then also have the magnets already been set in there. So we're looking pretty good. So I'm going to let this cure for uh, the day. Uh, come back tomorrow and we can, uh, hopefully by then I'll have this dremeled out. And I can start doing some sculpt work, get it all fixed up and patched up. And then uh, we're looking pretty good, so we're looking like a nice, good, uh, decent head with a really uh, authentic key. So uh, we'll be back on this. All right, so we're back on track. It's been a few days, and now I'm getting back to this Joker. Uh, so what I did is everything's working out pretty good here. Uh, so I made this little line going across here, and I had to drum out all this stuff because... If I let this go down too far, this head won't stay in because of the way this cloth is. Because it's very, as you can kind of see, it's kind of narrow up there. So I got to kind of keep the ruffles on the back of his like neck to a point. And so this way the head actually goes in there. Because if, uh, if you do too much, it's going to push it down and then it gets kind of caught. So you got to kind of fudge it a little bit in the back. But I mean the front of the neck and everything will work out good. So I don't really have to worry about that much. But... It's just the back part. There's not a lot of give with the collar. So it's just something you have to work out before you start sculpting. So uh, we'll mix up some A's and we'll just start working out all this stuff here. And then uh, after that we can uh, pretty much paint it. Uh, the only one thing I'm going to have to probably do is I'll probably mask this off after I do my A's work. Once it's dried and cured. And do a little priming around here. Don't have to go too crazy with it. But as long as there's enough primer on the resin. So this way I can do all the white and touch up the neck.
All right, so uh, I sculpted the bottom of the neck, and as you can see, uh, I had to add that little extra rolls on the back of it because his head is going back so far. It's the only way I could really get this to kind of set correctly without uh, pushing any of the cloth away. But I think it actually looked pretty good to uh, look like the cloth is actually pushing up the back of his uh, neck a little bit. Just to give it a little bit of a texture too, I have a older uh, paintbrush from uh, when I was sculpting A's back in the day. It's the stuff starts to get really clunky and dry, but it get, becomes hard and like all messed up at the tip. So it's good for like, you know, creating like a skin texture. So that's pretty much where I'm at. I, I worked out a little bit of the vein right here in this neck. Uh, and then over here I worked out a little bit of vein over there. And I think it'll look pretty good. You're really not going to see too much of the back, so I'm not really worried about it. It's just a matter of getting the front of it and making sure it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to let this cure and I'll come back the next day, do a little sand work and everything and touching up and see how it all works out. And then uh, we'll go from there. Okay guys, so it's the next day. Everything's cured up. Uh, we're looking pretty good. A lot of this stuff gets hidden though within the collar, but at least it's fitting here nicely now. So everything works out pretty good. So uh, let me just try to get them a little bit of a turn to show you guys what we're, uh, what we're looking at here. So looking pretty good. So I did a little bit of the neck, uh, you know, back fat, I guess, of the neck. And it's kind of because he's turning backwards. So that kind of works out pretty good. Fits in there. So the next step now is we're going to do some sanding, kind of cleaning up. And I'm going to paint it and we'll come back when it's all done. Because most of this video is just kind of showing you guys how everything works. Because I got to also do a repair on the hand, I think. And uh, that's pretty much ready to go. So we'll be back once he's all done. All right, guys, we're all done for this video. I still got a lot more to do as far as sealing the eyes, doing some paint touch-ups. We're going to try some dyeing of this uh, yellow cloth. I don't know how well it's going to work out. Uh, it's kind of like an experiment, and the client pretty knows where we're going with it. But I just wanted to get this video out and show you guys that you can take a head from one statue and you can pop it onto another, and you could get some really cool effects. Now, the main issue is the cloth. We don't want to destroy the cloth, but we want to get this head into here without, you know, ruining everything and making life crazy. So you just copy the key, and then you attach that key when you make a copy of it to this head, and it pops in and out. So there you go. And uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, it opens up a world of possibilities for you guys. You know, I mean, say you got one head for one statue. You love this head, but you want it always on this statue, but you never really knew how you could do it. This is a process that can help you guys out and really get it on there. Um, the other thing, too, is if you wanted to skull from scratch onto this cloth, but you don't want to destroy the cloth, you can make a copy of this key. And then what you could do is you could take that, uh, that key and you could put up a metal rod and you could build an armature and then you could start sculpting and then you know you can make a clay fresh sculpt from you know from scratch and you can actually put it in and out of the statue without destroying the cloth and then the other thing too is say you wanted to do a 3d print and you wanted to change up the head you can you know because 3d printing it you, you can't really sculpt the key you just can't do it but what you could do is you can print the head to a right about there and then what you could do is you could take a key, if you're, you know, if you have cloth, you can copy it. Or if you don't have cloth, of course, you could kind of use Aves and you could push Aves in there. And you could push the head in and then you could let it cure and then pop it in and out once it's all cured. So there's a lot of options, there's a lot of ways of doing it. But for this specific project, we had to save the cloth and still get the head into the statue. So hopefully you guys liked the video, hopefully it helped you guys out. Uh, you know, uh, I'm just more of a guy, guys to the new to the hobby that really don't know a lot of this stuff. This is the type of process you could do and really get some cool stuff going. So thanks for watching and we'll be back with some more videos.